I want to bring in Peter Cook. He is at the White House, and Bloomberg's Ryan Chilcote has covered Russia for years. He joins us now via telephone. Ryan, let's start with you. Any surprises? You know, uh, not exceptionally. What I thought was remarkable is uh, that they made a really strong uh, effort to show that they're unified ahead of these talks. There was no uh, clear sort of uh, division. You know, the, the Germans, the French, uh, Britain are very concerned, in fact, about the, United, the idea of the United States arming uh, the Ukrainian military. They're worried that it would just lead to a proxy war, like in the old days, where you have the U.S. on uh, the one side and Russia on the other, and it would just create more violence. But in this press conference, she didn't really, while she said uh, lethal you know, help wasn't, you know, going, wasn't the solution, um, she didn't criticize President Obama. And I, what I found really interesting also was um, that they said if these talks fail and they kind of think that they will, then they're going to act and that there could be more sanctions. The fact that the president would say his only goal is for Ukraine to defend itself, does that make you think President Obama really doesn't want to be involved here? For sure. I, I don't think that he wants to get involved in this. Uh, you know, the United States uh, thinks long and hard before it gives uh, the kind of aid we're talking about, the kind of military aid to many countries, uh, a lot of countries which are, are much closer to the United States than Ukraine, never get this kind of aid because they're concerned, OK, when you give these weapons to, to, to these people, where does it end up? Um, so it would be a huge step. And I think he would really like to avoid it. And I'm increasingly thinking that this is a stick before these uh, negotiations that are going to take place on Wednesday in the capital of Belarus with the Germans, French, uh, Russians and Ukrainians. Uh, and, you know, it's to say, if you don't cut a deal there, then this is on the table, though he made it clear that it's not the only thing that's on the table. So, uh, Peter, as uh, Ryan uh, was just saying there, they seem to be both be on their best diplomatic behavior there, including um, also on the issue of the NSA, where, you know, Angela Merkel could have tweaked the president a little bit on that point, but chose not to, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, do you think that this is sort of evidence of a slight bit of diplomatic impotence on their part, that they really are kind of out of weaponry with, so to speak, uh, with the Russians at this point? Well, I think on the NSA issue in particular, uh, I think bigger issues have come to the fore and have basically put that on the back burner. There's a reason, uh, you know, she went out of her way to thank the United States for the sharing of intelligence with Germany because uh, that intelligence has been helpful to Germany. So it's still an issue. It's an ongoing issue. The president asking Germans to, to give the Americans the benefit of the doubt on some of these issues going forward. It's not done, but it's on the back burner. These other issues, Ukraine, there are differences there, pretty readily apparent, but they're going to remain maintain that unified front going forward. I think that's what was most important, what we saw here. They're going to agree to disagree on the idea of providing arms to the Ukrainians, but they're going to be on the same page for most everything else.